What a beautiful day. Have a look behind me. Master Puppy's looking amazing. It's meant to be winter. I mean, it has rained for a week, so. All right, so you may or may not be able to see behind me there. We've got some visitors and I'm gonna introduce you to them. Who likes livestock guardians? I know I do. Let's go meet them. All right, here we go. That was an exciting. Oh, that's good. We've got a whole heap of large dogs here today. I'm going to let my special guest introduce you to them. So, who do we have here? Emma Marema. <laughs> Speaking to the microphone. Oh, hello. Hi. Right. Hi. Who is your special guest today? Today we have Ethan. Hello, Ethan. Hello. And his Kangal Scout. Where's Scout? There She's she is. She's here somewhere. Hello, Scout. darling. Good <laughs> year. Yeah. So we wanted to do a bit of a um, a livestock guardian dog meetup hang out today um, and I thought what a better opportunity to get Scouty out and get some socialisation with other dogs that are just like her and heaps of space and they're all so perfectly neutral and chill amongst each other which is the beauty of them. Oh, tell us a bit about Scout. She's a good girl for those that don't know. How old is she? Yes, yeah, Scout is a 15 month female Kangal. Um, She's very big. She, yeah, she is big. They are a very big uh, guardian shepherd dog. She's They're beautiful. definitely up there, yes. And the males, obviously, much bigger, much bigger. Female Kangals can get around 50, upwards of 50 kilos. The males get around 65. Uh, there is another breed, well, there is another version of them, which is called the Actuary Malakali. They can get up to 80, 90 plus kilos of just pure on the spot guarding, not really uh, like a chaser, like the Kangal who would chase down the prey. Uh, the X-ray is more uh, on the spot, house, stead, protecting kind of thing, straight away. I see. And they're normally paired together, three Kangals, two X-rays. Interesting. Yeah. Like another thing, they pair, pair them together because the, uh, the, the Kangal has the ability to chase down wolves, uh, even bears over in turkeys, and the X-ray paired them with Kangals have the ability to take down the bears. So where is the Kangal from? Where do they originate? Uh, Turkey. Oh, so nice. the, these ones are... Like, don't quote me, I'm not a, like a, like a guru or anything, but uh, Sivas Turkey. Ah, for, okay. for this line of Kangal, yep. wherever she's gotten. Um, yeah, Sivas Turkey, which is, uh, as far as I know, like the, the, the standard, the high end mm -hmm. of the breed. And where did you get Scouty? Because I didn't know there was many breeders in No, so I, for me, it took about four years to make happen. Um, f uh, found a breeder down in rural Sydney. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, That's so, a long drive. <laughs> yeah, I did the whole trip, 10-hour uh, drive there, 10 hours back in the one day to get it home. Nice. Yeah, nice. I didn't want to go in and, like, transport or anything. I'd you did do better it myself. than me. Yeah, yeah, did it myself, yeah. <laughs> Why did you pick a female as opposed to a male? Uh, personally, I just always had uh, female dogs. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. and um, just from what I've heard about the, the, the female Kangals, like, they, they bond better, yeah. Interesting. A little bit better, and they're the ones that actually initiate all the fighting. What have we done with training with Scouty? Uh, okay, so most of my training was done at a young uh, age, when she was around three months old, at Master of Puppies. Uh, so if you are owning a Kangal, you need to know what you're getting in for or um, understanding their needs. So purely it is, like, not the type of dog that wants to, like, sit out like that or, like, do all the like the tricks kind of stuff. Like, yes, she can do them, but it's it's a slow process. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much all she all she needs to, is like a job guarding. She'll do it naturally. They're they're yeah pretty good. Uh, I do a lot of training to stimulate her needs. Uh, tracking, a little bit of like simulated hunting, which is why I always have food on me. Uh, just as long as she's getting that st stimulation and know that she has a job, and she's happy and yeah. fulfilled. She loves. Yeah, very actually very good um family family dog actually. Only really want to be around family. They're, they're not the kind of dog that you want to, uh, hey, look at my dog. They, they just don't. They're very aloof. Yeah. They're very independent. Very aloof. Very so uh, calm-natured. Mm. Yeah, very calm-natured dog. They're great. They're good. Yeah. Oh, well, you've got dogs. a cat at home as well, don't you? Uh, yeah. So yes. generally ve it's not uh, a hard process at all to introduce them to, uh, like, a, if you have other pets or anything. So, like, from the get-go, um, even as a puppy, she, she was just more... Hey, there's a cat. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna look after the cat. <laughs> oh, that's great. 
<laughs> yeah, exercising. So they are a very big dog. And as you can see, Scout is in pretty good shape. So she gets exercise in the morning. Uh, in the afternoon, I like to do a lot of my obedience, hunting, uh, tracker training with her. So we, we do it all then. Uh, on their own, if she doesn't have a flock to protect, because they will normally do around anywhere 30 to 50 Ks a day of just moving around with the herd. Uh, so obviously I don't have that. So she gets that through me and it's just like I just said, like doing activities together, stuff together. So you would say that they need a lot of mental stimulation, although they're not maybe high energy dogs, yeah, but they yeah, do Yeah, they don't need come across as like stimulation. hyperactive or anything like that, but they yeah. do need a lot of mental stimulation. Indeed. Um, yeah, otherwise you'll probably learn that they're very good at digging holes. <laughs> I was getting up Mon <laughs> this morning, literally yeah. Monty this yeah. morning. Yeah. <laughs> So why a Kangal? Um, I've got small man syndrome. No. Uh, <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. no, um, just ever since, like, just learning about the breed and just, like, just literally, yeah. I was like, that's a cool dog. I, I would like one. Oh, well, good on you for putting the yeah. time and work in. They are yeah. a really cool dog, but they do need a lot of work, and you do great stuff with them. Oh, no, she's, totally. Yeah, a lot of happy, work. She's happy. She's fulfilled. Yeah, yeah. C credit to you. She's yeah. a great dog. Did you, when you found Scout's Breeder, was there criteria that you were after? Yeah, so I had to apply to own a dog like this oh, and beautiful. just uh, to be able to show him, like, hey, I know what I'm getting in for. Um, I'm able to um, give the dog the stimulation that it needs uh, and whatnot. It's not the kind of dog, like, they're, like I would recommend to people unless you do know what you're getting into um, because, again, a very serious dog, they are bred for literally protecting and they, there's no training required for that. It's just, they, it's, it's in the breed. It's they pure instinct, yeah, they, just, they just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah very much so. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you yeah. know about Maremmas. All right, Emma, how about you share a little bit of about Frank with me? About Frank. Um, I've, I've, where is Frank? I've had Frank for nearly, he's nearly four, so I've had him for a bit, a while now. He was, he started out as a bit same as you. I wanted a, um, a big, guardian dog. I didn't have the stock, but I wanted to be able to stimulate and keep those dogs. Sorry, I'm distracted because they're off chasing motorbikes right now. <laughs> Scout's like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Get with it, Scout. I, um, okay, Frank. Um, no, Frank is my, my second Maremma that I've ever owned. He's nearly four now, so I I picked the Maremma after my first one. She was a beautiful dog. I fell in love with the size and just the look of them and the gentle yep. nature and the protective instincts of them. And what would you say his temperament's like? Um, overall, he's very calm. He's pretty aloof. He's in a social setting. He's very, very neutral. He's very just independent, very on his own, doesn't really get bothered by anything. Um, it's a little bit of a different story when I do put him on duty and I put him on guard. He's almost a different dog. Yep, they, very... they know what they're doing straight yes, away. Yes, yeah, he and... gets very strong and very sure of himself and very confident. He quite literally, like, puffs out and walks around like he owns the show. Yep, but... and that, that's another thing I've noticed is, like, not like a normal suburban dog. You, you No matter where you bring them, they are, they are always in a position of just looking at what's going on. Indeed. He's so vigilant all the time. He's just always looking around, always on alert. I have very, very good control of him, so at home he is allowed to be vigilant and do his thing and act accordingly. Um, but when we are out and about. I don't mind him being vigilant, but he would never just go off randomly at nothing. He's a very good boy and he knows better. And for those thinking about getting uh, this kind of, type of, kind of breed, <laughs> um, what kind of lifestyle would you say? Oh, look, if you've got to have a job for them to do, like you said. Yeah. You've got to have something for them to do either. A lot of space is ideal because they yeah. do, they track up a lot of kilometres just roaming around. They're not hugely active, but they do need a lot of space to roam. They enjoy yeah, definitely. setting their perimeter. They need to be able to just guard their own space and observe. I will yeah. just have space and a job for them to do. Um, <laughs> if you've got to have... Like, I saw something that someone posted about owning a Malinois. It was got to have, I think it was a firm hand with a silk glove or something like that. Very similar to the Livestock Guardians. Like, you've got to be oh, very, 100%. very firm with them and just consistent with them, but not actually overly tough with them. Yeah, you know, and, you... and being a dog trainer, how would you say the difference is with working with a... Uh... Guardian livestock dog versus just uh, a normal, your normal dog. regular dog, especially Stubborn? 
so stubborn. They're yeah. just oversized cats yeah. working with livestock guardian dogs. They just yeah. every other dog, like Quinny there beside me, she has a drive to please and she you can use that drive. She has toy drive, food drive, and they want to work for their humans. Whereas um our livestock guardians here, their job is to protect their livestock and that's it. So they have no drive to please the handler. So it's very, very hard to get across when you yeah. need to. Uh, I will say as obedient as Scout is, she's always <laughs> yeah. questioning the command whether I need to do it oh, or not. Yeah. They, they do do it. Yes. Uh, whereas is like a shepherd dog, he, he will do it for you. Indeed. Just on the spot. Yeah. Scout, she is like, looks around, why do you want me to sit right now? But it's oh, like fine, there's got to be context behind yes. it. Yeah. yeah. Every time I ask Frank to do something, there's got to be a why. You know, why are you asking me? Whereas Quinn, no questions asked. <laughs> <laughs>I get a lot of attention. Um, what is that? The, and obviously there is not too many of this breed over in Australia, actually. No. Um, so naturally, yeah, I do get a lot of attention. A lot of people asking where I could get this kind of dog from. Um, and honestly, I just tell them, like, you need to un know what this kind of dog yes. is. Like, you need to know. Do you get It's not the kind of dog a little I would... bit like yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, to be honest, I probably shouldn't even know one. Uh, but, yeah. but, I mean, but you're doing I've, the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fucking dog. It's a lot of work off. and it's a yeah, lot of dog. Yeah. But if you've got the time, you've got the energy and you've got the passion, then oh, 100%. why not? Yeah. yeah. Tell people she's half kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> she's part Australian marsupial. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're an experienced dog owner um, and you obviously know about the breed, it is, it's, it's, it's a breeze. Like, I've never had a single issue, uh, no reactiveness, uh, nothing. And from the get-go, uh, again, straight into, like, some, some education for myself, training the dog, um, yeah, it's. I've had honestly no no troubles owning a Kangal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then again, it's just. It, I think it it's all comes knowledge. down to the owner. Like yeah. It could. Like I. There's always stories like, oh, my Kangal just doesn't tolerate anything. Uh, no other dogs. It will. And it, again, it's just the owner. They haven't. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Shown like you can picture. see, she's. Yeah. Beautiful, calm. She's very lovely. well behaved dog. One of these Maremas she's never met before today, and no issue. They're all completely fine. That one. And they're all completely fine. <laughs> So I hear Scouty doesn't, um, she's not a big swimmer. No, she's not a swimmer. Oh, well, we'll, yeah, um, we'll, we'll find out. That's okay, we'll try and change that. The boys do swim. Well, I mean, the so water looks enticing. <laughs> looks lovely. Um, and I know the boys will go for a dip, so hopefully they can um, Show her the persuade way. Come her. Come on, guys, let's go. Let's go for a swim. <laughs> She doesn't like swimming. No, not a swimmer. I've tried it and I can't I couldn't get her in the water if I tried. Okay. Well, I mean, like I was saying earlier, sometimes the dogs uh, that come in here for the daycare, some of their owners say that they don't swim, but then they just follow them in. So as you can see, we've got three maremas in the water at the moment visiting today, just hanging out. Hopefully she goes in and just hey, follows goes, direction, you know. Sometimes we throw the toys in and they sort of just follow each other and then they're swimming. And some owners can't sort of believe it. You might see the stubbornness of a kangaroo here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, hopefully she does but go she in so she knows how good it is. Yeah, look at her looking. She looks very tempted. So what do we got? We've got three maremmas. They're about to be three brown maremmas. <laughs> <laughs> one kangaroo and one little cuddle dog. Yeah. No, nope, doesn't want a bar. <laughs> yeah. That's These sweet. Been waiting all week. Scotty, hey!
do it. Yeah, he's like, oh, my job. Don't you do it. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Stop pushing. Oh, he's going to get ambushed. You want some water? <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for coming along today. It's really cool. Um, thanks for having me. Bringing the, the lifestyle guardian dogs around. It's really uh, cool to get some uh, unique dogs that we generally don't have out here. Because yeah. we don't get too many Maramas. We definitely don't get too many of these. Mine's I mean, I've only trained one, one, which is yours. I'm pretty yes. sure. Yes, it yeah, is. I mean, yeah. we've trained some, you know, different breeds that we've never... Indeed, that, yeah. ...that really don't come about too often, that you don't see around. Like, what did they have last night? Oh, well, I mean, we had a Rottweiler last night. It was a huge Rottweiler. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. bloody huge. Yeah. Bigger than the normal um, the normal uh, Rottweilers that we get through here. Uh, puppy Rottweilers yesterday. I know Great Danes. What else did yeah. we have yesterday? Leon, oh, what did we have? Oh, your Burgers the other day. I mean, I've only trained a few of those. Good boy, uh, But the, the larger dogs. Boy. Look, I love working with them. Uh, definitely a different experience. Yeah. Uh, I'm not super experienced with these guys. Uh, I mean, you're more experienced than, than I am. I suppose I'm more experienced with the the other type of working dog breeds in the protection sort of world. Indeed. Not for livestock. No. Uh, no. Even though I suppose in their um, in their past that's what they're used for. Yes. Uh, but these yeah. days, more law enforcement and biting people rather than <laughs> <laughs> foxes and uh, a deterrent for you know animals trying to get to livestock. Yeah. Good. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming out today. Is there anything you would want to tell people before looking into getting one of these dogs? Yeah, definitely. Just know know the breed, know the dog, know what you're getting into, actually. So you're not going to get the dog and find out a year later, I, I can't do this, I can't look after the dog, and ends up in a home like most Maremmas do. Yeah. So just educate yourself. I mean, especially Maremmas have definitely been on uh, TV a lot lately in Australia for... Um, People are giving up on them really easy because they think they're these big, fluffy, fun, loving dogs, which obviously they're, they're finding out that they're more protectors of their property and they up and they just bark they're constantly. Very dogs. <laughs> yes, they can be very serious dogs. <laughs> they yes. are working dogs. On, at the end of the day, they are working dogs. Exactly. They're not yeah. a set and forget yeah. dog. They exactly look cute, right. they're fluffy, they're not your golden retrievers that you're just going to bribe with a bit of food and everything's going to be hunky dory. They're very serious. They need a job and commitment. Yep, exactly right. Well said. Thank you. Well, Thank you. on that note, we'll uh, let you go. And uh, again, thanks once again for coming. Uh, thanks for having thanks me. Thanks for bringing it. the girl out. Yay! <laughs>